Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, so today my plan is to uh, go over the basic coding in R, uh, including uh, <coughs> loops, conditions, functions, and input output. And then uh, we go over uh, a simple statistical analysis of the 2020 USA election result. Uh, hopefully that's a bit entertaining. <laughs> so, <yeah. coughs> Okay, let me, uh, so R is a programming language, so it actually does, has the programming uh, ability, including loops, uh, conditional if else, uh, of, and it's also uh, uh, very important to know how to do output after we do analysis, how do we output our results. Okay, so the coding in R, uh, that's basically is unit two, uh, so the bootcamp uh, have four unit. Well, if you <laughs> doesn't in include the R study one, the one, two, three, four. Uh, those are the units I uh, plan to cover for this bootcamp. So today we are going to cover two, three, and four. The first one is quite a bit long. It's like all yesterday. So <clears throat> if I have uh, updated the, the GitHub, so if you Go to the uh, second unit, R coding bootcamp. You can open up the R uh, uh, basic programming as RMD file, the one I'm highlighting. That should be, it's this file, basic R, uh, yeah. <clears throat> basic R coding. Uh, uh, the main focus here is uh, focusing on loops. So, uh, so R has a for loop. Uh, actually, if I put this as a HTML, maybe it looks a little better because then uh, you, you won't have to see all those the tags. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so this, yeah, it, this does look more uh, plain than the R Studio version. So. So the for loop, well, the syntax is looks a little different in other languages, but the the spirit is the same. The for loop. So this is a one line for loop. And basically, uh, for i, that's the iteration variable, and that's the range. Uh, for i in one two three, we print the i. That output is what one, two, three. So it's uh, very simple. And many of you actually from computer science, so it's, uh, but uh, many of you also from biology. So um, if you if you think unfamiliar, you just have to think about this. This I is is something going to keep changing. But how will I be changed? It's going to change from one to three, and two is in the middle. So. Uh, in R, we can also specify uh, the range of the vector using C, uh, I guess, officially it's for combine. And so in the next example, we have I for C in what? 0.5, 1, minus 2, 5. And then we'll print out the I. Now the I going to, first is 0.5, second is 1, third is minus 2, the last one is 5. You see, it always print out the, the one because when you print out I, it is it's thought it's a vector, but so it's always print out the first element, uh, but it's just a, a vector with just one element. So, okay. <clears throat> the next one is a bit more, uh, uh, one more operation. So, so we're still using this for loop uh, for i in that combined range. But this time, we actually uh, do a little bit of operation inside of this for loop. And the way we can specify this range is using this uh, curly uh, braces. So this is a left curly, this is a right curly. And that gives you the range of the for loop operation. So inside this for loop, 
uh, operation. The first operation is what uh, I times I basically is a square. And then we just uh, take a square root of that again. So uh, basically that's uh, the absolute operation. So, so 0.5 is still 0.5, but minus two now it becomes plus two. So this is uh, a bit more complicated to follow. Uh, the uh, R language also has a while loop uh, operation. So the for loop, you need we need to specify the range of the variable. The while loop, uh, we actually need to specify a condition when that while loop will start. So in this case, we uh, use a we, we have a variable called i, uh, which is at the value of two, um, and the operation is while. Uh, I is less or equal than 10, then we do this uh, while loop operation. So inside we're going to print I, uh, and then uh, I equal I plus two. So one tricky part of the while loop operation, you have to change the condition if you want it to stop. Otherwise it will be an infinite loop, right? So if you say while, uh, uh, one greater than zero, that we, that is absolute truth. Uh, so one is always greater than zero. So it's going to never stop. And then you, if you want to stop that kind of loop, you, you need to make a condition inside a while loop to break it, unless you really want it to run forever. So, so in this case, uh, I is two, so it's going to, print out the first one and then uh, operate in the second line, i plus two, so two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Once it reaches to 10, this while loop condition, uh, once it reaches 10, the next one will be 12. 12 will violate this less than 10 condition, then it starts. So this is the while loop. And that, well, we already mentioned the condition. <laughs> this is more formal. Condition, in R, uh, we have a less than uh, well, or less equal than, uh, greater than. We, we can also use and. This is and uh, uh, means uh, x has to be less than one or greater than zero. Well, x is 0 0.9. If it's less than greater than zero, less than one, we print out say x is between zero and one. So. And else, x is not between zero and one. So this is the, a bit of a dumb uh, statement. <laughs> so x is 0 0.9, and we output what? x is between zero and one. OK. And if I change that into something else, uh, so in, uh, which one I'm looking at? Um, here, if I change this to 1.9, now X should uh, go to the next uh, uh, branch. So you should print X is not between zero and one. So yes, so now it's not between zero and one. Uh, what happens if I choose one? Actually, because this is absolute, so it still should be the not. So yeah, so it's not. Unless I change the condition, so less equal than, then it will be between. So. The boundary, uh, how to handle boundary uh, is always a tricky situation, especially for numerical analysis. Uh, it had to depend on your uh, specific case, whether you include that boundary or not. So, and, but that's it, uh, in general, uh, for programming, boundary test is a very important uh, uh, test. It's one of the, situ uh, it's one of the most frequent situation where the bug or error will occur. So how to handle condition is an uh, important uh, uh, factor to consider. So, <clears throat> okay, so let's move on to the next one. Uh, the next one, uh, well, <laughs> I, I guess I intentionally made a very uh, complicated uh, logic operation. So that exclamation sign means negate. So X, greater than one, negate means x less or equal than one. Uh, 
an and that's a logical and x less than zero negate that means x great or equal zero print x between okay uh, that seems to be logically correct <laughs> so basically is this is basically the same thing like the, the top one is either between zero or one or not so 0.5 is between zero and one so it's uh and this is really nothing except just uh, make it a bit more complicated. So show you can you can actually do a lot of a, a logical operation. So uh, this I guess the key is that uh, exclamation sign is a negate operation. So uh, <clears throat> this double equal sign means logical equal operation. So is x equal 2.5 or not and 0.5 is there so this will print out uh inside x is 50 percent so uh, this so so far uh, we already had the if else so this is another example of if else uh, operation branch point and if x is not less than zero, basically means X is great or equal than zero. And well, then that's a non-negative number though. So. Else, and that will be a negative number. Assuming X, I guess, is the, not a complex number, I guess. So, so well, X is minus one, so it is uh, print out negative. So. <clears throat> okay, so that's the, so, uh, we have to over uh, uh, loops, for loop, while loop, and conditionals. So uh, this this the floating topic uh, uh, counting is actually very useful here. So, so we have uh, uh, questions. Uh, oh, uh, see you at the other Oh, does the variable has to be i? No, it can be anything. In fact, uh, we can just use anything. I think as a variable, <laughs> just for fun of it. Let's say for anything in one, two, three, print out anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that just also work. <laughs> so, in fact, we can change that from zero to what? Uh, uh, five. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, uh, we can also change something else. Like say, uh, Joe, for Joe, in that print out Joe. That should also work. Oh, Biden, or oh, Biden, print out Biden. Yeah, as long as it's not a keyword, it should always work. Yeah, so, uh, what's that? Uh, so Alice in that, print out Alice. That should also work. Yeah, basically, but let's say if you use a keyword, you say for fall in fall, then it's going to give error because fall is a keyword. This should give us error. Now, now it's an error. So it's not exactly any word. Is anyone accept the keyword in R? I guess yes. Uh, but if you say for for two, then it's not a keyword anymore. Then it will work. So, but that's a bit confusing, right? <laughs> so we can just say for. Uh, did I say I? Yeah. But I is a convention, I guess. Yes. Usually we use I J. Uh, what are the L? <laughs> I J K. Yeah, those those are common uh, variable names. So, yeah. or for loop, or while loop. So, okay. So, uh, okay, that that's a good question. Okay, uh, it can be it can be something else for I in C. Uh, red, blue, uh, yes, uh, orange. It can be non-member, so there, uh, print on red, blue, and orange. So in fact, uh, in R, I, I believe you can even, even do uh, weird things. So there, oh, wow, well, actually one, I also treat as a string, so it's automatic converting to string. So. It, it can be non-integer too.
Okay, good question. Uh, actually, I probably should put that uh, in the example. So that shows the for loop uh, while loop is not exactly uh, just limited to that. So let's put that uh, later on. So. And then we'll have a, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, that's a good uh, question, thank you. And the next one we are going to uh, show how to uh, define function uh, using in R. So the function you can you can consider function almost like a, a button on a calculator. Or in fact, uh, an app on your phone can be considered a very complex uh, function. Uh, you can consider function is basically a black box. You can consider a black box is something inside goes in and then something goes out. And you, we shouldn't worry about what's inside of that black box. So it's basically a procedure to perform uh, uh, expected a task, uh, task. And we have input and we expect some output. Uh, so. Okay, so, uh, But once we define function, we need to separate uh, what's inside of function, what's outside of function. And that uh, can be uh, a bit confusing for pe people who have never done programming. So, but this is actually is a very important concept uh, in uh, programming when you are trying to do some programming. So. <clears throat> okay, so now, uh, uh, we are going to uh, have a X, which is the a list of our numbers, and then Y is just a string. Uh, but we have a function here. This is uh, the syntax of R to have the function. That's the name of the function. That's indicate this will be assigned as a function and actually seem to be quite intuitive function, that's the keyword. And the input of this function is x. Uh, what is x? You notice if you come from different languages like Java or C, we didn't even specify the type of x. And so this, uh, apparently our language uh, is a bit loose here. And so, but we somehow, you, you somehow has let people know what X will be. In this case, it will be a list of members. So now, in, so this function was, uh, it's a pretty uh, simple function. I'm going to just take the even number from that list. Right, so in this one, one, two, three, four, a uh, two, four should be the output. Two and four should be the even number. So inside the, the one, I create another uh, list uh, with nothing there. I call it a y. Uh, this is this y is inside of my function. Uh, notice there is also another y outside. That's the outside function. That's a so called a global range, global scope. Uh, this y inside of this curly. Notice the curly range. That's inside of function. That the, this y is the uh, local copy. And inside of that, I basically using a for loop, uh, go over uh, the first one to the last one of X. And if uh, that basically is the indexing I, if that number uh, modulate, this is the modular div uh, division uh, by two is zero, then it's an even number. So this is the modular division of two. And then what I do is I basically combine the Y with that uh, uh, XI when it's even and assign it back to Y. So this is almost like put everything in the back of the list. Uh, uh, in fact, this is uh, a pend uh, uh, operation uh, officially, I guess. Yeah, so. and, but this is in, in R, we can just use a C, uh, combine a list of itself with a new, if I put this at the beginning, that will be inserted into the uh, beginning of the list. But now I'm putting at the end of the list. So it's putting at the, the last one. So. And then uh, 
I print out inside the Y, so you will know what's inside the Y and what's outside the Y. So, uh, okay, so I've, so after I finish this function, I input uh, run this function. Uh, that's the take even use X at the input. It's now uh, return what Y uh, print out Y two and four. That's the output. So inside, that's just called, let us know what's inside. Outside, uh, did I print out outside? I didn't print out outside. Okay, let me go back to us to print out outside. Uh, okay, so I'm going to here, I'm going to say, Think Oops. outside Y. That, uh, yes, that's called outside Y. Y. Outside Y equal not. That should work. Maybe. Except I haven't run the previous one. So I'm going to run all the chunk above. Okay, so now I run this one. Uh, yes, outside it, I'm global. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, so okay, if I knit this back into the HTML, open browser. Uh -huh. I hope our studio actually updated their own inside the browser so we don't have to do this anymore. Uh, okay, so function scope there. Uh, so Y is global or print outside the Y. Yes, outside Y is still global, but inside the, the Y is two and four in the list. So that's the difference between the scope. And of course, the best way to distinguish is just use different name. We don't have to use a Y everywhere. So we don't have to use X or I everywhere. We, we can uh, just use a different name. Maybe we just call that uh, Y, Y global inside of uh, Y inside. That's just make it, uh, there's no ambiguity. So that's probably the best way. Uh, that said, uh, uh, as the since that now I teach computer science, I have to give exam. This is often one of those tricky exam questions we often give. <laughs> so, yeah, just multiple choice. Ask students to say what's after run this. What's that variable is? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so uh, we can actually now assign the uh, list of function into another variable. So that's the uh, Z variable. And we can assign another function to the W. So, well, Z is two and four. Uh, one to 10, oh, that might be two, four, six, eight, ten, right? So the, the, after we finish this function, we can actually operate, uh, use it repeatedly on many other new data set, input data set. So, uh, this is just a few more examples. So, in fact, we can actually customize this C find something on the fly. Apparently, so we can also write a function to call another function. So we we just wrote a function called take the even numbers. We can write another function and calculate the total of that even numbers. Uh, uh, so, so even total will basically call that take even function and just sum up everything. So this a function call another function uh, is a way to build up a more complex uh, functions procedures. So, um, so in this case, uh, we have the X as that input and total of that will be, let's say, two, four, zero, two. Oh, that will, two, four will cancel it out. That should be zero. Okay, good. That is zero. So, yeah. So, this is example to show we can use a function to call another function. So, uh, 
Uh, here's another example uh, to, to, to show the scope of the variable. So x, one, two, three, four is the list. Y is just a negative of that. Uh, but to keep a copy of that, we call it y dot outside, just to make it clear. And then uh, we have another function uh, called take upper half, um, take the upper half of the list. Uh, inside, uh, we intentionally create another y. And when then we calculate the mean uh, of the input and then anything is above that mean number x bar. And we are going to append to this, what is this? This is the local y number, local y list. Then we intentionally call it y inside. So, and then we run this function and it looked like I didn't print out the y outside. Uh, okay, let me print out the y outside intentionally. So, uh, okay, then I'm going to also print y dot, oh, is, that, is that how I call it? y dot outside? Uh, Y dot outside, okay. Y dot outside equal Y dot outside. And then we will in, uh, uh, explicitly compare these two. So. Function as good, let's see. Uh -huh, yes, here. Uh, why don't also, oh, I should actually uh, put it up with, with a loop <laughs> because it's a, a list is actually print out the concatenate four times. So inside, uh, y inside is three and four positive. Y outside is still minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So this is just another example to show the inside the function and outside the function, uh, the scope is different. Uh, yeah. Okay, so R can also uh, save the working directory as the binary file. I'm oh, sorry, I jumped in a little bit. But R has a lot of package, and this is the one package called APE, uh, A. That's actually is analysis, Analysis of phylogenetic and evolution, something like that, uh, APE. Uh, uh, if you try to run that, it's going, if you don't have it, it actually will ask you to install it. Uh, it actually doesn't, uh, this is just an exercise for you to, to, to show whether you can load it or not. And R also has a sequence input, uh, se that's the biological sequence input uh, function uh, packaging. So, and we can use the help. Uh, once, once you install and load the library, you can look for the help information to check what's inside of that library. Uh, in fact, I believe I don't have that installed myself. Probably. Uh, let me try this. <laughs> Oh, I already have it installed, it looks like. Uh, so there, that's the oh, analysis of phylogenetics and evolution APE. So, and then, and then you, uh, you will see, well, it has a lot of functions. Uh, it looks like uh, it can handle uh, amino acid, uh, Ancestral character estimation. Uh, is it a lot? Uh, uh, to be honest, they, uh, many of them I don't even know what they does. Uh, for lessons, uh, that's just D. Now, uh, this oh, it can obviously can do the distance estimation. 
faster ME, what is that? Uh, yeah, so obviously this is the, uh, for those from biology, you may want to really check into this package. Uh, uh, Oh, someone someone asked uh, asked a question about a global variable and a local variable. Uh, global variable, local variable, and global variable. My understanding, they operate in different places inside the computer memory, so it it's not a replacing. That's uh, that's the difference between the scope. Uh, a good question. Sorry, I missed that. It it's basically the scoping uh, inside of a. Basically, the function work like a black box. So inside a, a black box, uh, operation does not affect things outside. That said, there are cases of passing by reference that can be a little tricky. But we are not going there uh, right now. So, um, uh, in, uh, in in official computer programming, we we can't do passing by reference. So in that case, we can actually does change a variable outside of that function. But uh, for our um, uh, typical analysis, we usually don't do that. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in R, we can also save the working space. Uh, the, obviously, the best way to avoid this, just use different name. Um, but, in this case, I intentionally use the, the same name just to show, to, to, to make the point here. The, the Y inside and the Y outside, they are not the same. Um, but in practice, we can just use different names that make it our, uh, uh, keep, keep our brain less busy, right? So, <laughs> yeah. It's also uh, prevent bugs. Otherwise, you, you may, even though, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I have been doing this for a long time. Uh, uh, in one one time, I made a project. I forgot uh, how I named the variable. Uh, I spent a whole day trying to figure out what it is, and in, it turned out when I do a copy paste, I paste one line twice, and so there is a variable at the bottom of my code. I, I saw that coming up, but I did not. So, but I forgot about it. <laughs> so I spent a whole day just to figure out a copy pasting error. So, yeah. Um, so R can also sit, oh, if you call a variable, then I Okay, yeah, that's a good, uh, that's, Probably the by default that how R works. Yeah. When the scope and how that found a good way or I don't know if you want to get uh, so save the uh, we can actually save everything as an image. This is actually very useful when we work on very large project. I used to work on a, a project uh, need need to do calculation for a few days and but then I need to come back uh, at that time, I don't have a HPC. I have to run everything on my laptop. Uh, so I have to do something and then save it and then come back again, load it again, and then re redo the, uh, continue my uh, uh, work. So, so one way to do that, just save everything as an image, save the current working environment as an image, and then come back. Um, when you come back a few days, uh, maybe after the vacation, and then you load it back and then redo it, yeah. And when you when we save everything in the image, it literally saves everything inside of the, the working environment. So save the other image is the yeah, that's the it's just the uh, uh, way to make make our life a bit easier, yeah, especially for large projects. So. Okay, so this is uh, Basic R coding. I, I think I also have a slide. Uh, I, I have a PowerPoint for this too. Uh, in fact, even a PDF there. So. Yeah, so, uh, oh no, that's the output, sorry. I guess I should uh, open up the PDF.
Yeah, I do have a PowerPoint. Uh, but the next example will be uh, yeah. So I I did did uh did not exactly follow all of them, but uh, uh yeah. So you can't uh the slide is basically the same thing uh, as I went through the code. The next one I'm going to show you a practice to how to gradually uh build a, a more complicated uh, about more sophisticated uh, functions. So. Uh, many of you, especially, uh, especially when you are doing a science lab, you may remember how to make the molar solution. Right? So, for example, if you want to make uh, a one molar sodium uh, chloride, a formula weight of sodium uh, on molar mass uh, is 58.443. So for one liter, one molar of sodium chloride, and then we need a 58.443 gram of sodium chloride. That's the formula. So, but what if we want to make a one millimolar? One millimolar is actually a point, uh, one out of a thousand molar. One milliliter uh, is one out of a thousand liter. So what, what if we want to make, a, a, say, a, 10 millimolar and 150 milliliter, how much sodium chloride do I need? Right. So we can't write a function to do that. Um, so let me see. Uh, actually, make, there's a code called make solution. Um, the, that's this code. <clears throat> so, so and we can just, well, write the function 58.433, that's the formula weight. And since the X is number of a, mid, a millimolar, we divide that by 3000, that converted back to what? Molar. <clears throat> and the Y will be the milliliter, we divide by a thousand, and that will convert it back into liter, and then we, Use the same formula again. That's out. That should give you the, the how, how many grams of sodium chloride we need to make X and Y solution of sodium chloride. So, uh, in this case, uh, let's say this one what one hundred millimolar and five hundred milliliter sodium chloride, and uh, what we got is what two point nine two grams. So this well. This is useful, but uh, this function always does it just for sodium chloride, <laughs> right? So it's it's not a it's not a very general. Uh, so, but and then we can make a a better version instead of just do it for sodium chloride. We can take the formula weight. Right? This time we we know the concentration, volume, and formula weight. And then we can do the calculation. So this time we can use the formula weight, time concentration, time volume, then just, uh, those are all milli, this is again the mini uh, liter, milli, uh, millimolar, milliliter, formula weight. So divided by a million, that's the outcome. So, and then we can do not only for sodium chloride, we can also do potassium chloride. And since potassium chloride 74.55, one three, that's the formula way. And then we can, so now this is a bit more useful than the previous function, right? So this function now I can do it for any uh, chemical as long as I know it's formula weight. So yeah, this is version two. Uh, you remember your iPhone is uh, what, version 11 or 12? I, I don't even remember. <laughs> so, well, my, uh, my uh, Mac OS system is now 10 point something, OS 10, so. Uh, okay, so this is, but I don't always remember the formula when you want to use a calculator. Do you remember the formula? No, you don't, right? But you may remember the name of a chemical. So here's the version three. Instead of uh, uh, using the formula weight, I just give the, 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 the name of the chemical. And then I can, the function will take care of the formula weight itself. And this is, a, well, this is a very simple version of the, of the uh, function to do this. 
I only have a what? Uh, four kind of chemical, remember. So in this case, I need a, a small database. And this is not even a database, this is just a lookup table. Uh, I have formula weight of uh, one, two, three, four, four chemicals. And they are what? They are uh, sodium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium uh, nitrate. Is that a nitrate or nitrate? A nitrate? Uh, I'm going to call it nitrate. Uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, and then once there's an input formula, I just look for that formula and take out that uh, the formula weight. So this is basically a named vector inside of R. I just take advantage of the name, the vector inside of R. So it's actually going to be very quick. But that said, uh, it's, if you have the entire, say, Merck uh, library of chemical, it, it's hard to handle this way. You, you will really need a database to do that. So. Right. Uh, and then I have the formula. Uh, well, again, uh, after I got the formula weight, I can just time the concentration, time the volume, and uh, normalize it. And then I have the solution. So in this case, I don't even have to input the formula anymore, uh, 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 the formula weight anymore. I can just put uh, the uh, name of the chemical there. So there, we, so there, I put the sodium chloride, it has 2.922. And uh, if I put the uh, 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 sodium hydroxide, oops, uh, sodium hydroxide, and then well, it's actually two gram uh, because it's exactly forty. So yeah. So there, this is a, a very. Uh, a bit simple, case, but show you how we can gradually uh, modify our code. The first time I wrote it, uh, uh, yeah, it, it did the work for sodium chloride, but it's not very useful in a sense. But the second time I make a version two, it can take the formula weight. But the third time when I implement, now it's actually seems a, a little bit smarter than just put a formula away. So it makes the user uh, uh, at least don't have to remember the formula way, right? So, uh, this is just an exercise to show how we can gradually build the function uh, and make it do things, um, make better user interface, I guess, yeah. So. Uh, I think that's covered about the, the basic coding concept. Uh, yeah. Oh, how the function return? Ah, oh, I, I didn't mention explicitly. So the function re, uh, in R it uh, return uh, in implicitly just the last value. So I didn't say return. Oh, good question. Uh, <clears throat> so. R by default return the last line. Uh, good question. Sorry, I, I didn't mention that. And so, so this is a bit different from, I guess, if you come from Java, C++. Those, those uh, strict program language will explicitly say return something. In R by default, uh, I, I should mention this. Uh, in R uh, by default, Last line result returned. So it, because uh, in R, R is mainly designed for uh, numerical statistical analysis. So it simplifies the return. By default, the last line is just returned. And so if I say return that, it may make no difference. It just return that. Oops. If I say return that, it makes no difference. It, by default, R will just return that. So, and I guess that means if you write a lot of function, it save you a lot of typing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you uh, you won't you uh, you won't return multiple lines throughout result. Uh, you have to if you have multiple result, you need to make an object. Uh, make a, a, a declare a object and then return that object. So that's a bit uh, 
uh, all you can do a list of list. Um, yeah, that's a bit more complicated. And actually, uh, yeah, I think you can uh, put a list and you can get the multiple returns. Yes, Mira, uh, what do you say? I can't, uh, as you said, you can put a list and you get a multiple returns. Yeah, yeah, you need to specify a heterogeneous yeah. list of returns. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you, can, you can make a list of return, a list of list actually. Yeah. Uh, good question, though. Uh, obviously, uh, people are really thinking ahead. So. Um, <clears throat> by the way, this is a very, uh, even though we, we went two days uh, uh, for session, more than nine, uh, about eight, more than eight hours, but there's many uh, material online. You can, there's also a lot of very complex, uh, complicated material there. So, uh, there's, but many of them just free. So there, the, there's a lot of a new uh, a graph. Uh, they should, actually most of these are publi publishing. So uh, R is also very good at the geospatial computing. So tax mining. Uh, yeah. So here's another list of the books. Uh, so I put it up right at the bottom of our uh, workshop material. This is uh, uh, our data science. This is a very good book, Introduction to Statistical Learning. Uh, it's actually one, a very popular book. Yeah. So it's, it's amazingly, it's also free. <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm actually not sure how they negotiated with the publisher because it is a Springer pub publication. So. Uh, and they are, they are actually really a lot. And so, yeah. Okay, so I think it's time to take a break and then uh, publish it later. And we come back with input output and we probably can also start a, a little bit with a simple statistical analysis with USA results. And, and then we will have, a, if we have time, then we have a, a um, more leisure way to, to deal with the progress in the afternoon session. Yeah. So, questions? Or... Um, yeah, it looks like some of the, uh, you know, other programming language. So, and so R is actually not a, not a syntax strict language. Yeah. So, Okay, uh, any other question? If not, uh, let's take a break. We can come back at the work. Uh, uh, someone want to share their screen? Or I, I guess we can come back uh, still at 11.10. So um, I sort of like make it less confusing. So. I can also update the GitHub, so make sure everything is uh, updated. So. Yeah, I have just updated my uh, GitHub account. So. And, well, anyone hadn't used the Git or GitHub, uh, you should really look into this. Although this bootcamp is not about GitHub, GitHub, but it, this is a good, uh, it, this is something uh, you should look into it, especially when you are doing computational work. So, so I just, uh, so you can see uh, on this Git uh, repository, I started in 2019, uh, but every, uh, every year when I offer it, I, I make change. This year I really made a lot of change because of the 
COVID-19 and the election result. Uh, <clears throat> it's used to use other material. Uh, it's actually still there online. So the older material is still there. So if you look at the, the old commits, Uh, hey, uh, Hong. Yes. Uh, yes. So, good morning. Uh, this is Fan, and uh, you know this website. You know the process server link doesn't work. So, are you going to fix that this afternoon? I uh, say what? The process server link on this uh, website doesn't work. Wow. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So, are you going to have it work this afternoon? Yeah. When you which, go to post which post server, uh, the post server is not working. This? No, you can click it. This doesn't work. Oh, it works. Oh. Okay, it works. Can, can you try again? Uh, yeah, let me try it again, yes. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you. Sure. Uh, so so we, we actually need to complete this post survey after this afternoon session, right? Yes, hopefully, yeah. So. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, maybe uh, let's take a break, come back at 11.10, so according to us, let's follow our schedule. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.